In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to select the most favorable altitude given the winds aloft. Here I've just pulled up the weather from aviationweather.gov, which is the NOAA website. And looking at the EMI area, which is Westminster, Maryland, we can see the winds at 3,000, 6,000, and 9,000 feet. So at 3,000, the winds are 310 at 44 knots. For 6,000 feet, we have 310 at 25, and at 9,000 feet, we have 280 winds at 25. What I'll now do is pan down to the flight computer, and what you can see here is I've taken this data and I've plotted it given the true heading and the, the magnitude of the wind velocity just as in my other video on how to determine the ground speed and true heading I've basically just done that three times here we can see 9,000 feet here is 6,000 feet and here is 3,000 feet for the Cessna 172 we'll typically cruise at a speed of around 110 knots so for each of these three dots we'll line them up with 110 knots to see the effect here we already have 9,000 feet aligned with 110 knots, and we'll see that the wind correction will be minus 10, and the ground speed will be around 92 knots. If we then slide the card down so that 6,000 is now lined up with 110 knots, our ground speed will be around 85, and our wind correction will be 2, 4, minus 5. And if we repeat again, this time to the winds at 3,000 feet, so we'll line up 3,000 feet with 110 knots. So 3,000 is lined up with the 110 knot marker. We'll see that we have a minus 8 wind correction angle in degrees, but our ground speed has suffered significantly and is now only 68 knots. Given the available options, it seems that 6,000 feet would be the best. While 9,000 feet would give us the highest ground speed at 110 knots, we also would have the largest wind correction angle. 6,000 feet at 110 knots only has a 5 degree to the left or minus 5 wind correction angle and a ground speed of 85 knots. So for only a sacrifice of 5 knots, we have half the amount of wind drift which is going to decrease our chances of getting blown off course if we are not careful and precise in our navigation. So the best solution is not always the fastest ground speed but, but also one that will uh, give you an optimal solution in terms of both ground speed and wind drift relative to the heading you're trying to fly at. So next time you plan a flight this will hopefully guide you in making a better decision.